Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are gonna look at information schema to see how we reverse engineer PostgreSQL. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll be using Postgre 14 as our database and notice here 6.11 for our PG admin. Just follow the 123 as you see on the form to get to the information schema catalog objects. Let us use information schema and let's find out about this database in PostgreSQL 14. I'm going to right click on learn and notice it says query tool. Now the first statement I'm going to say is uh, select star from information underscore schema dot tables and then I'm going to hit the go button. And notice it returned 219 rows and notice we got our table type of base table and view. So when we're going up against information schema dot tables, we get both base table, you know, tables and views. Now in our second SQL statement, notice I'm going to go for information schema tables. Notice I'm using the alias T and then I say T dot table type. Notice table type will either be base table or view. And then I'm going to get the count. And I only want to use it where the table cat catalog is learn. So just this one. And then I'm going to group by table type because I'm using an aggregate function count that will give me the count of table types. Notice this is telling me there's 137 views and 82 tables. So now you're starting to see that information schema will give us a wealth of information about what is inside of our database. On this next query, notice I'll be using where the catalog is learn, the table type is base table, and then I'm going to get a list of the table schemas and the table names. Let's execute that. Then notice we got quite a few different schemas here, and I didn't make those. The schema I'm using is called public. So these are mine, and these are the tables that I've been using. So I'm not going to be doing insert, update, and deletes into these tables. I'll just be using mine. So let's limit this just a little bit more where only the table schema is public. And there you can see we made the change. Let's re-execute that. And notice now we're down to the 16 tables. So from account all the way down to tran type. And there you have information schema dot tables. Notice in our next command from information schema dot columns I'm going to get like the catalog name, table name, the column name, its ordinal position. Now, is that required? Is that nullable? And what is this data type? And how large can that field be? So all of these columns are kind of like important to me. And what I did is I limited it down to just one table called movies. Now, you might be wondering, what good is this? Is this even usable? Well, let me give you a demonstration on how I use this. As you can see, I have selected a table in this little program I wrote. And that table has four columns, just like our demo here. And here I can see the column name is data type. Is it the primary key? Is it an identity column? There are, are the columns nullable? Are they computed? Are the columns of type timestamp? What is the ordinal position? It's math length, it's precision, it's scale. So I get all of these columns from information schema dot column. And then what I can do is I can do a lot of insert, update, delete procedures where I don't have to do it by hand anymore. So notice on this first procedure, this insert statement, I actually created this and it kind of tells me who the programmer is, what date they did it, and then here is the procedure. But as you see, this took me like one second. Now I can also come there and do the update statement. So I can click update and then say generate that procedure. And here is my primary key. So I know I'm going to update one row. Now it is possible I get an error in there. So you see this go to error return. So Notice that, you know, like we have all this branching inside of my code to make sure we handle that appropriately. I hope you're starting to see that reverse engineering your database provides input to maybe another program where you can like generate some code. 
Now you've already seen me do the insert, the update. Of course I can do the delete. But what if I wanted to knock out the basics of a, my web API? So notice here, I'm on my insert, I mean my update, and I'm gonna call that procedure. I'm gonna pass in its parameters. Notice I'm gonna go route test HTTP post, post update, and then I send in this object. Well, where did this employee's object came from? Well, guess what? We generate that as well. So that is not magic. That is just reverse engineering your database and knowing what you need as output. As you can see in this statement, we're actually gonna be going up against two information schema tables. First, tables, and then table constraints. Look here, I'm looking for the constraint type primary key. In the results below, you see that we have 16 tables. But not all of the tables have a constraint type of type primary key. So as a kind of like a database DBA, I would be kind of concerned why these don't have it. I would go examine the contents of these databases, database tables, to see if indeed they do need a primary key. Now, not every table needs a primary key. So one has to be smart, but having tools like information schema sure does make life easy. In this next section, we're going to be looking at all of the types of table constraints that are in our database. So let us start off again and let's show you a list of the tables that are in the learn table catalog of type table and their schema is public. I think we had 16. So we have 16 tables. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to see what kind of constraints are available on those 16 tables. Then notice here I can see that there are 19 check constraints. There are nine tables that have primary keys. How do, how do I know it's nine tables and not all 16? Well, Primary key can only exist one time. A table can only have one primary key. And there are two other unique indexes. Now, that could be as little as one table or two tables. We'll figure that out in just a moment. But once again, this table constraints, it's just opening all kinds of doors for us. I did, on my last query, I did a left join here for that primary key and it showed me ones that were missing. Now I'm gonna say, only show me those nine primary keys. Where are they? Notice that we got our nine rows. All of these tables have primary keys. Now notice I said constraint type primary key. Now in our previous one, I wanted to know the constraint types. And remember constraint type, one of them was primary key. Now let's find out who has these checks. So now I'm gonna take this type constraint check, copy that, and we're gonna paste it into my next statement. Notice I have pasted check into the TC constraint type, and now we're gonna go find out the table, the schema, the constraint type, and is it enforceable? Let's see that. Okay, so look at all these check constraints that we have in here. Now remember I had 16 total tables, so 12 of 16 have some kind of check constraint. That's kind of like good to know information, right? And now let's look at the last type of constraint. Notice our last type available is a unique index. And let's just copy that and let's paste that down in our next query. So I have pasted constraint type equals unique into that same query we've been executing. And let's see what's going on there. And notice that we have two tables that have unique indexes on them. And now I think you're starting to see that this Table constraint is a pretty important table. It tells us about our primary keys. It tells us about our check constraints. It tells us about additional uh, indexes. And I'm sure there are several other constraint types. For instance, like a foreign key. That is another one that I can just think of off my hand. Let us now look at information schema dot check constraints. When I highlight just the first two lines of this, notice it comes back and tells me there's 517 check constraints. And it kind of looks like they all say uh, 
is not null. So why don't we do a test to see if all of these are like is not null. So we'll do that query. And then, uh, ooh, look at this, 515. So that means two of them are not like this. So what we can say is, and uh, execute. Oh, okay, so here we get some different kinds. We get a uh, some functions. So this is a yes or no check. And then this is a cardinal number check. You notice the value is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so this is pretty nice. So here you see what check constraints are. And you know, if you're writing a code generator, you would probably need to know about these different type of check clauses. Now in this example, we're going to go up against information schema dot column domain usage. And this is going to take me to walk you all the way through to even understand this if this is the first time you're seeing this. So here, let's execute the SQL statement. Now what this is telling me, see this user defined data type, I've renamed that and it's called the domain name. So someone went out there and created a domain name, you know, like a new user defined data type as SQL identifier. And then someone made one called yes or no. Well, these are not real data types. Somebody made this up, right? Doesn't that make sense? And someone made this up cardinal number. I mean, these are good names, no doubt, but especially yes or no, I like that. But you know, when we're looking at a database, we don't have these kind of data types. We have like varchar and varchar and double float. We don't have yes or no. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my own data type and they're called domains. So I'm going to say create domain legal to drink as now I'm, that's an integer. And I'm also saying it's not null. And then I'm throwing in a check clause too. And I'm saying, Hey, when they try to use this legal to drink, the value has got to be greater than equal to 21. Does that make sense? So now we have a new data type. The data type is called legal to drink and it's an integer and you gotta be at least 21 to use that. Let's do that. So now I've created me a new data type. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a table called uh, test domain usage and notice I say age. Now I, I could just say in here, right? But that's, mm, we're testing this. We're testing legal to drink. And then I'm doing an integer. Now let's go ahead and create that table and let's make sure everything is good. So I'll create a table. All right, still good. Now notice I'm going to say enter, insert into that test domain age and age two. Now notice here, my value for age is 10. What does this say? Hmm. You better be at least 21 greater than equal to. So this will fail because of this check constraint. So let's uh, do this. Let's try to insert that kaboom. You know, the value for domain legal to drink violates the check constraint legal to drink check. So it, it fails this part, right? Nice. Now, so far you're with me. Let's go see what happens now. Insert into that same table age and age two. Notice here I'm using 21. Well, 21. Okay. That'll work. And then 10 just has to be an integer. Let's try to make this go. Oh, look at that. And now I can select star from there. And guess what? I've got the data. Now look here, it's telling me that data type is integer here. Well, you know that now, you know that because of this create domain command. Now we're getting back to column domain usage. Now look what I'm going to do here. I'm going to highlight that select it. Now notice we now have our our new user defined data type legal to drink. Now it's in the table called test domain usage. You saw me test that. You saw that it was going up against a column called age and you got it. I mean, there's no hiding from you. Now you've got enough skills to kind of like unwind any database. This right here is a pretty complicated uh, feature of any database. Uh, SQL Server kind of has the same thing that I use all the time. And there you have domain usage, column domain usage on information schema.
Now we need to know this last information schema domain and notice how it joins with CDU domain name. That's the user defined data type and the domain name that's in the domain table. So notice here, I wanted to create a new user defined data type called legal to drink, but its real data type is integer. And this is the SQL statement that can get you there. So let's highlight that, execute it, and guess what? We're all done with information schema dot column domain usage and domains. And there you have a team information schema. Now this is only six of many, and I have to do quite a few videos to finish them all, but Table, column, table constraints, if you master those, you can start writing code generators. Start saving yourself some time. And you saw my demo where I created a very simple insert, update, and delete statement based on kind of like those three information schema objects. That's all I have, team. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you've got questions or comments, please leave them below. And guess what? That's the end of this video. I'll see you back in my next video. Have a good week.